Apostle Lee Robertson serves as Apostle of Sons of God Embassy in Kinsland, Georgia, USA. Apostle Lee Robertson has the heart of the Father for the emerging generation. He impacts the lives of many through his prayers, prophetic insight, and wisdom. He is known for his teaching and preaching of the Word of God and has witnessed many signs and wonders in his ministry. He also moves in great revelation of the Spirit of God. He has been sent to raise up sons of God, to equip and train them for their God-given assignment. He is truly fulfilling the call on his life by uncovering the gifts that lie within many. Apostle Robertson walks in wisdom beyond his years, and with a humble heart he reaches many lost souls for the kingdom of God. His first love is evangelistic work, but God has used him in various offices and giftings when needed to breathe life in and on those who have lost the very essence of life. God has anointed Apostle Robertson with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he goes about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil, for truly God is with him. He is happily married to Prophetess April, and they have one child. Apostle Lee recently released a book that is taking the body of Christ by storm titled, The Blood, The Other Voice in the Courts of Heaven. Apostle Lee Robertson currently operates under the apostolic covering of his spiritual father, Apostle Francis Miles, founder of Francis Miles International. Let's welcome to the stage, Apostle Lee Robertson. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lamb of God. Come on, let's bless Dad Miles, Mama, Camilla. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in heavenly places. God bless you this morning in Jesus' name. I um, want to, as Dad said, I want to, uh, how many received the word on yesterday? How many ready to stir the blood? How many, how many, is anybody ready to stir the blood? Wake it up. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. And so I want to go just so that we understand. Uh, I'm always going to start with Revelation 13 and 8 because Revelation 13 and 8, when you get this revelation of Revelation 13 and 8, you'll understand the origin of the blood. Um, so I want, you, I want you to understand how the book came across. So I want to say this. When I was invited to Sedona, I was uh, in a valley and never been to Sedona, Arizona, but I've been to Arizona several times before, but never been to Sedona. So I want you to see how this message came so you'll understand why the message came. Because there's, we're entering, we have entered a time now where the blood is going to become more important to the body of Christ as it's ever been before. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so God is relying on us. That's why I started, uh, uh, we call our people blood banks. Just like the world have mobile blood banks. Come on and say amen. Have you seen those, bu those, those, those buses come and they what? Giving blood. So God is going to turn you into a blood bank for the kingdom of God. Amen. So you're going to invade your city. We're going to invade, you're going to invade your state. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We're going to invade what? Your nation. Are you, and then we're going to invade what? The country, the continent. And so we're going to cover the globe what? with the blood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, one of the things I want to point out is this, is that I'm sitting in the middle of this valley so that you'll see how powerful this is. And so I, I, I leased a, a place, or Airbnb, and I was there for 30 days. Now, I had a routine where I would meet with the Holy Spirit. And the only instruction I was given was to come before him every morning. And I had Hebrews 9 and 14. He says, I want you to plead the blood over your conscience. That was the only instruction I had going there. So when I got there, the rest of this came unfolded. And so I landed uh, at 125 Sedona Road in Sedona, Arizona. Uh, from my house, there was three mountains. So each morning I would get up, I would fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and then I would go into, I did not know at the time, but the, the Holy Spirit began to teach me, said, this is what I'm about to do after they gave me the revelation from Revelation 13 and 8. And the Holy Spirit said to me that, that I am taking you into the fellowship with the blood. 
Now, I never heard that before. Obviously, I heard of fellowship with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with the Word, fellowship with the Father. Come on and say amen. But I never heard fellowship with the blood, so it kind of threw me back. And so, and then the Holy Spirit took me to Hebrews 12 and 24. Hebrews 12 and 24. And Hebrews 12 and 24, if it's up, uh, praise God. Hebrews 12 and 24 says this. And to Jesus, the mediator of what? The new covenant. And what? Sprinkle. Okay, so he's not just mediating the new covenant. He's also still sprinkling the blood. Because in the Old Testament, the priest, what, sprinkled the blood, right, in seven areas. Well, Jesus is doing the same thing with his blood. Then it goes on to say, which speaks what? Better things than that of Abel. And the Holy Spirit said this to me, and it blew me away. And then I began to understand the fellowship with the blood. Holy Spirit said, if it speaks, it's alive. (laughs) Woo! My God. If it speaks what? It's a lie. And then the Holy Spirit began to teach me. He says, now you need to understand why that it speaks better things than that of Abel. And then, it, and then the Holy Spirit says that Abel blood stopped God in its tracks. Is that right? Hello, somebody. Is that right? God stopped this to, to even rebuke his brother because his blood cried out from the what? Earth. Is that right? So even God stopped off of Abel blood. But here's the most powerful thing. Abel blood had iniquity in it, but it still stopped God and had God avenge his death. Are you with me? So then the Holy Spirit said to me, but you need to understand that Abel blood cried out as a victim. But Jesus blood cries out as a victor. Oh, God, give me somebody here. And then he said to me, But the problem with the church is that you can't walk in victory if you're claiming to be a victim. Oh, come on, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, you can't walk in victory and be a victim at the same time. So you got to drop one. And I choose to drop being a what? Victim. So I can walk in. Come on, somebody. Say amen. And so then the Holy Spirit says, if, if it speaks, it's alive. If it's alive, then it's speaking for me, speaking for you on your behalf. Now, I, at this moment, I did not understand. So outside of my window, every morning, I will open my shades, and right in front of me was a massive mountain. That mountain turned out to be the name of the speaker of right now, Lee's Mountain. You can't make this up. Come on. (laughs) Are you hear what I'm saying? So I'm walking around and I stopped at this young lady house and she invited me into the house. And and I said, by chance, what is the name of that massive mountain? And she said, oh, Lee's Mountain. At that moment, I left earth and went to heaven. (laughs) They was talking, but I was not there. I ran. I, I was like, are you kidding me? And now next to Lee's mountain is another mountain named Courtroom. Y'all not in this building with me. Yes. You think God is up to something? So I I ran back to the house. and I'm, I'm, I'm at this point. I'm gone. So and then the Holy Spirit said to me, the mountain in front of you. Is your name. So whenever I show you a mountain, it means the authority. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It means ownership. Are you with me? This is how come when, when Abraham went on the mountain with his son, Abraham named the mountain. God didn't name it. Abraham called it Jehovah what? Shira. That mountain belonged to Abraham. It belongs to the seed of Abraham. So now we control the mountain of finance. Are you with me? So, so the Holy Spirit says, now look to the left. And the name of the mountain was courtroom. And he says, your book shall be called the blood, the other voice in the courts of heaven. I did not go into the mountain looking for a book. 
In fact, I went into the mountain to quit. Oh, y'all preachers too holy for me. I was exhausted. I was tired of being used as a preacher. You're not talking to me. I was tired of going, helping people and people calling abuse. I was just tired. I, 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 I figured if I go on the mountain, I negotiate with God, and I, say, I will say to God, listen, just let me be a normal Christian. I'll show up. I just want to make it in. I was tired. I was exhausted. Our marriage was on the rocks. Y'all ain't talking to me. You, but see, when you're stupid, you can't see or you can't hear. I was stupid in that moment. Are you hear what I'm saying? Now, he's telling me to plead the blood over me. Now, he know what's going to happen. I'm so stupid. Hello, somebody. I'm so slow that I don't know I'm being set up. By the time the blood finished with me, my marriage was healed. My ministry was restored. You ain't in this building with me. Now lives going to be changed around the world. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The blood will revive anything that's trying to die. The blood would awaken anything that the enemy think it has closed. Are you hear what I'm saying? But you must trust the power of the blood. So Revelation 13 and 8, so then he began to speak to me. He said, you need to see there's two people in Revelation 13 and 8. It's those that will worship the beast, but then it's those that are written in the Lamb Book of Life. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that the blood had already purchased First Peter, First Peter 1, 18 and 19 says that we was bought or purchased not with silver or gold, but with the precious blood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so the Lord said to me, you need to understand that the blood is a kingdom currency. Oh, give me somebody here to understand what I'm saying. The blood is a what? Kingdom what? currency. You don't understand. That means that the blood buys the moment of your deliverance. <laughs> you, got a, you got Apostle Francis Miles speaking, right? You got Katie Souza, right? You got David Herzog. You got me. You got Mama Camilla. Is that right? All the speakers and the singers. Get this. This is the power of the blood. They bought them so that you can get delivered in this moment. The blood paid for your moment to be here. You didn't just show up. The blood paid for you being here. That's why you had so much trouble coming. Because the enemy was trying to make a void on the payment of the blood so that you couldn't make it. But the blood is too strong. And the blood says she will make it. She will be healed. She will be delivered. He will. Come on. The blood bought this weekend. Shout the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is why this, the Holy Spirit says the blood pays for your moment of deliverance. The blood, so you understand that I'm not crazy. The blood paid for Jesus' arrival. The scripture says, in the fullness of that time was already born. Jesus couldn't show it up when Abraham was here. He couldn't show it up when Joshua. Because the blood didn't pay for that interest. It paid for the interest when the kings was growing in the earth. So that the real king can show up. But this king is bringing a currency that money can't even overvalue. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the Holy Spirit said to me, the reason the blood is so powerful is because the earth already had silver gold. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It already had currency that would lose its value. But it did not have blood without iniquity. So when you plead the blood over your life, are you hear what I'm saying? That's why you have legal right. See, 1 John 1 and 7. 1 John 1 and 7. Are y'all all right? Am I okay? I'm going to show you so you see how powerful this is. Okay, 1 John 1 and 7 says... What does it say? As we what? As he is what? 
we have what? One with another. And uh, let me show you something. Watch this. This is very powerful. So the blood takes you into a fellowship of a time zone that you was not there. This is why you need to fellowship. What, what do I mean by that? Okay, so everybody here, okay, my, my last name is Robeson, right? Okay, so if you pull my blood, it would tell you the history of my natural order. Is that right? Right? So it will also tell you what has happened and how healthy my family is based off of my blood. Okay, that's the natural order. Fellowship with the blood takes you into your spiritual family. So when you fellowship with the blood, you can get what A.A. Allen didn't finish. You can get what John Lake did not finish. You can get, are you hear what I'm saying? What Catherine Kuma did not finish. You see, why? Because the blood of Jesus Christ connects you to their fellowship before they came. You can get what they didn't finish. You ain't in this building with me. This is why when Jesus was preaching and the church was sold out, they showed up to him and say, look, your mother, your brother, and your sister is outside, but they can't get in. But Jesus says, whoever do the will of my father is my mother, is my brother. So when you fellowship with the blood, you have legal right to go in and ask for the anointing, the authority, the power, the wealth that your ancestor did not walk in. But I'm now with the blood and I have legal right because that's my family and I can walk in that authority right now. And you can do that without flying overseas, laying on a grave. <laughs> Fellowship enters you into a lineage. Oh my God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. See, the blood, see, once you fellowship with the blood, now you have legal right. This, you can redeem. You see, once you cleanse, once you go through the cleansing of removing your iniquity, that's why I was glad what David said last night. You can turn around and say, now blood, you have removed the iniquity from my lineage. Now there's a law in you called redemption. Redeem my name. <laughs> Are y'all hear what I'm saying? You, you can say, we've been seeing it. We've we seen it. This, okay, the fifth day. I wake up, and I'm, I'm, I'm about to fellowship with the blood. So I go before the blood, and I dip my hands into the blood, okay? Because I want to challenge you to do these 30 days. Take 30 days. Now, I've been doing now two years. I'm, I'm stuck. I, I'm so now stuck with the blood and the Holy Spirit. Now, we have conversations in the heavenlies now. Are you hear what I'm saying? And I've seen things. I've saw things coming that I don't even have time to even say to you, but you will begin to see. I begin to dip my hand. Let me show you. This is very powerful. I dipped my hands into the blood. I came out, and I said to the blood, I said, blood of Christ, I fellowship with your cleansing and your washing. Now wash my hands of the iniquity that my forefathers. The moment I said that, hands appeared behind my hands. Another set of hands. Another set of hands. Another set of hands. As far as my eyes can see, I saw hands. I asked the Holy Spirit, what is this? He says, that is the innocent bloodshed that your forefathers shed on the earth. Repent for it. I was bothered because I'm African American. I'm a victim. I can't, I can't, I can't hang out with y'all. You, you're too. I was offended. I said, my forefathers, I said, they killed us. And then he immediately took me to Acts where it says there's one blood that gave birth to the nations. And he said to me, you don't understand forgiveness. There's only one blood. So if that white man killed your ancestor, that's your forefather. Y'all ain't ready for this. He said, repeat. He said, there's only one blood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, it ain't no Black Lives Matter. It's all.
And he said to me, you must repent for your forefathers. So he said to me, now, about four years ago, I wrote a book called Time to Forgive. And he said these words to me. He said, unforgiveness will stop the blood of Christ from moving in your life. He said, those are your forefathers. They're not strangers. Oh, God. They are in your lineage. And he says, repent. He said, your land is locked up. Now, I begin to repent for my forefathers. And I saw the slave owners ask my forefathers. I know this is a problem for many of you. But America is not going to be free. You don't heal racism with racism. That's ridiculous. Come on and say amen. We got the wrong representatives representing us. You going to have to forgive that white, that Asian, that Hispanic. We all brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. That's only one blood that was shed. He didn't come for the black race, the white race, the Hispanic race, the Asian. He came for all mankind. And until we understand that, the power of blood will not work. Somebody shout for me. I'm tired. Just shout. Just Come on, I got anybody ready to stir? Anybody ready to stir? Anybody, anybody, anybody ready to stir in your state, in your city, in your neighborhood? Let's apply the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The blood allows you to see that's my sister. The blood allows you to see that's my brother. And you will stop bragging on him and won't be jealous of him. Because your blood, the blood of Christ, has no jealousy. Just excitement, passion, love, glory in the Holy Ghost. Jealousy is the proof you are in your natural order. Am I making sense to anybody? So I began to repent. The more I repented for my forefather and left my victimhood, hands stopped disappearing. And my hands was as white as snow. No one bothered me when I'm on my, on my, in my, when I'm my uh, praying and fasting. They don't bother me. And I wasn't getting good signals because I was in the mountain of Sedona. If you know Sedona, you know what I'm talking about. I had to go down the street just to call my wife. That's how bad the signal was. The moment I repented, a text came through. It text said, read it this way, man of God, I don't know why I'm texting you, but I just saw a vision of you claiming land. The land went as far as your eyes can see. See, the blood releases what's been held up by your iniquity. Iniquity, listen, we don't have to get deep. Iniquity is the spirit of interruption of your generational blessing. You understand what I'm saying? But what God is counting on you being a blood bank is you bringing your whole lineage with you. And not just you, but your neighbor. You understand? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, the Holy Spirit said to me, you see your hands. I said, yes. He says, now your hands can obtain what the ancestors denied entrance. This is why fellowship is going to be crucial. And I know many of you going, fellowship with the blood. What are you fellowshipping with? You are fellowshipping. I have 14 laws. I don't have the time to go. You are fellowship one with the life. The life that the blood carries. Okay? The second thing you're doing you allow in the blood voice because the blood, the, the, the blood has a voice and it's speaking for you in the course of heaven. But the second thing the blood is doing is bearing witness for you. The blood, you, you know in courts they call the expert witness? The blood is your expert witness. But he, the blood only speaks what was carried in Jesus' body for you. Now you guilty in your blood, but innocent in his. (laughs) 
<laughs> so, so this, you are guilty in your blood, but innocent in his. So what the blood does in the courts of heaven is turn to the righteous judge and says, oh, yes, yeah, she's innocent. And, and then the judge says, can you give me an expert? He said, yes, sure, judge. And the blood says, on this day when Jesus overcame. <laughs> Come on, somebody. The blood starts speaking for you in the course of heaven. Now, the Holy Spirit said to me, you must not agree with what is being said in the heavens here on earth. Your fellowship take you so you can hear those conversations. John 16 and 13 says, I bet when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he, that shall he, and, and show you things to come. So if the Holy Spirit don't speak on his own, but he's speaking off a conversation that he is hearing, what conversation you think the Holy Spirit is talking about? The conversation in the courts of heaven. So the... My God, give me somebody. So the Holy Spirit says, hey, I heard this up there. But your fellowship unlocks what you hear from the Holy Spirit. So when you fellowship the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit says to you, oh, that's yours. Oh, you heal. Oh, you delivered. And you can start celebrating. I don't care what's happening in my body, but I just heard a word. I'm healed of cancer. You ain't in here. I'm healed of tumor. I'm healed. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? Yes, I just heard something. The Holy Spirit is speaking what he is hearing. Then it, it unlocks the Holy Spirit to show you this second portion of John 16, 13. Show you things to come. That's why you have to fellowship with the blood. That's why when you come before the blood, you immerse your hands. Then you go over your conscience. Your, your, why? Because you have to move two things, and it's in my book. Spots and blemishes. I'm going to make a bold statement. And I want you to hold me to it. The blood is the final fellowship before Jesus appeared. You know why I say that? Because the Bible says in Hebrews 9 and 14, it says, un, it says that, the, that, that Christ ascended and through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot and blemish. Without what? Spot and blemish. He offered himself without what? Is that right? Okay. If Jesus went to heaven and showed himself without spot and blemish, and then he turned around and said to you in scripture, I'm coming back for a church without. You, you can't hang out with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's coming back. He's not coming back for a church that don't look like him. He's coming back for a church that has gotten rid of, of the spot and blemish. So all this lying teaching that we're getting in the body of Christ, the blood going to wash it out. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? Talk him out. You don't have to repent. The devil's a liar. You still got to repent. And God never gave you grace so you can keep sinning. The devil is a liar. You see what I'm saying? That's why the fellowship comes in because the fellowship cleanses and removes spots and blemishes. Titus said things have crept in unaware. That means that somebody in authority came in the body of Christ and started teaching false doctrine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And now there's a spot on the body. And Jesus just sitting up there saying, okay, I'm getting close because now it's some people in Tennessee about to be turning into the blood banks and they're about to be pleading the blood. My God, oh, I see my bride making herself ready. I see my bride making herself ready. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I I see. Listen, don't argue with them. Declare the blood over. Don't sit. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't argue scripture. You know why? I need my energy for real demons. <laughs> I don't. I had to preach one of them debate with me. I said, I'm sorry. 
I'm not interested in debate. He said, why not? I said, because a debate ain't nothing but a skillful way of saying I want to argue. I'm already convinced. <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord. Ain't nothing in between. Ain't no other way. Come on and say amen. Just because there are multiple ways to get to my house doesn't mean you have the key to get in. I wish I had somebody here to understand that the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. If you don't have the blood, you can't come in. Come on, say amen. Hurt their feelings so they can get saved. Come on. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Am I, am I making sense? You see what I'm saying? You, you have to understand. This is the power of the blood. This is why I'm saying, saying to you. Now, I want to say this. Please do not. Day 18 is the day I say religion died in me. Because. I had my little system put together, getting up 3 o'clock in the morning, worshiping until worship just turns me loose. And then I would go before the blood and begin to do my love. Then after that, I would come, open the shade, and speak to my mountain. It's mine, by the way. <laughs> so... After I speak to my mountain, I will come out. And the way God set me up at this house, this, this was this figure outside with a globe on it. It looked like a globe. So I would go out, lay hands on it, and speak to it that the places my wife and I would travel and minister. Right? I would come back. Then I would sit down, and I would do my reading of the scripture. Day 18, an angel appeared in the room and said, Son of man, arise. I jumped up excited, ready to go in the Holy Ghost. And by the way, 18 means life. So I go out, and that's when he start, I start mopping the flow. And so right in the middle, I was getting ready to go fellowship. And the Holy Spirit said, no, today you will not pray. You will not decree. You will sit. Ha, ha, ha. So, I'm sitting, and I'm like this, and uh, the religiousness in me woke up and said, it's kind of boring. <laughs> Say something, do something. So, I got up, and the moment I got up, the presence of the Lord left. Can I talk to you as an apostle? I know they want to. So, I said, oh, my God. I, I felt him lead the room. So, I went, I went outside, and I went in front of the word to open the word to start reading. He left again, apostle. And I said, you would think you would learn by then. But, see, religion won't let you learn. Religion is, is the spirit. You, you know what religion is? It's man frustration trying to reach God. So, I said, oh, God, I felt naked. And so, by this time, I know I messed up. So, I'm pacing. I was walking by, and I turned my eyes over to the shade to open it. And the Holy Spirit said, you bet not. He says, sit. I sat in the chair, and when I sat there, all of a sudden, the presence of God came in and took me out and took me right in the scripture where Elijah ran and hid in the cave. And it says fire came by, earthquake came by. You see what I'm saying? And he says, you see all that noise? He said, that's the church. He said, you don't have the earthquake, you don't have the fire. But y'all is not familiar with the still voice. And he says, you spent 18 days pursuing me. Don't you sense my presence in this place? He says, through this fellowship of the blood, I'm going to make centers of people. And they're going to carry my presence. You're going to be the center of God's presence. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? But you're going to have to learn how to sit 
in his presence without talking in his presence. The blood unfolds what is honor in you. It talks for you. Did you hear what I just said? The blood unfolds the honor. You see what I'm saying? It was an honor. The reason why Abraham is mentioned is because when he, he tried to match what was given to him, he matched it with honor. Honor is the highest seed one can sow because you can't buy honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that day, he said to me these words, and I'm going to say this to you. Do not turn this into a religious act. So now, before I fellowship with the blood, I, I wait to be summoned. The Holy Spirit, the blood summons me. Why? Because the blood is holy. So the moment I touch it, the holiness that's in the blood begins to touch my whole life and my lineage. And the blood begins to do the 14 laws that I'm talking about. The life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you have to understand, if Jesus was the manifested love of the Father, and he is, is that right? The blood is the liquid form of the love of the Father. So when he released the blood, it's love coming out. Is God saying to the world, I love you. Did you know you can get healed quicker in love than you can in the power of the Holy Ghost? And this is why you must enter into fellowship because fellowship gives God legal right to clothe you. Am I, am I making sense? Am I making sense? So, what we're going to do, we're going to go into a fellowship. I want to lead you because I want you to get this down for 30 days. But one of the things I want you to do, I want you to commit to the 30 days. Okay? And whatever you do, don't stop. I know it's going to, because when I first started doing it, it was strange to me too. But your God is strange. He is. He ha You got a strange God. He is. He does strange stuff like love your hate, your, love your neighbor. Who hates you? What? That's strange. He have a cow eating green grass, putting out white milk. That's strange. <laughs> he tell you to forgive those who did things to you that is unbearable. So you're going to feel and sense being strange. But watch this. The more you fellowship with the blood, you need to hear this because this is very powerful. The Holy Spirit said to me, the more you fellowship with the blood, the more authority you have to release it. If you remember the early 1900s, late 1800s, was the move of the what? Holy Spirit. Now, what made the Holy Spirit so powerful? Because Catherine Kuhlman, John G. Lake, Withworth, all these people fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And they unlock the move of the Holy Spirit that we're enjoying right now. Well, what's going to happen when we stop fellowshipping with the blood? Can you imagine the redemption? Because in the blood is reconciliation. In the blood is the love of God. In the blood is the peace of God. In the blood is the cleansing. The washing is inside of the blood. And by the way, the glory of God is in the blood. Because the book of Psalms said, who is the king of glory? The Lord is the king of glory. And then Corinthians says that it was God in Christ reconciling the world back unto him. So therefore, glory pulled himself inside of Jesus. And so when the blood came out, the love and the glory of God poured out on planet earth hello are you hear what I'm saying you see and so now now listen your fellowship will separate you from the religion that's pursuing you are you hear me you don't have to listen you don't have to remove or be ugly to anyone your fellowship will do it. You said, because whatever you fellowship with now have a legal right to clothe you. You see what I'm saying? Uh, now think about it. Okay, think of your three, three friends that you talk to the most, right? You have one that you're extremely close to. Is that right? Hello? Y'all ain't no friends? 
<laughs> Lord, am I, you friendless? <laughs> but, like, so three. One of them is extremely close to you. The other two are just talkers. You just call them to talk, they call you to talk. But one is always there for you. No matter what you go through, they always there. Are you hear what I'm saying? And they will stick with you no matter what's happening in your life. Right? Now, that one can go somewhere that other people are familiar with you. And they will say to them, you know what? You act just like. Why? Because they have fellowship. The other one is just conversation. And the other one will hear people say stuff about you and defend you in front of them. Be like, I'm sorry, you don't know April like that. My, I know April. You see what I'm saying? Talkers won't defend you. But those that fellowship with you will defend you. What I'm saying is some of you are about to enter into fellowship. And you're going to defend God in the earth. By walking in a power and presence of God that others do not know because all they do is go in God's presence and talk. So I want to spend the last few minutes. If, if you, I want to show you, I want to take you into fellowship with the blood. Is that all right? Uh, so the final thing I'm going to say to you is this. I was, I was praying and fellowshipping in the mountain, and the presence of the blood invaded the house. I've been, I've seen things the Holy Spirit done. I've witnessed miracles, countless miracles. I've been with the Father, Jesus. I've had visions. I've been to heaven. Praise the Lord. In 30 days, I've been walking with God now over 20 years. God done more, the blood done more in 30 days in my life than I, the entire time I've been walking with God. That's no exaggeration. My whole life has been completely changed. Why? Because of the blood. Because you have to see this. The blood is just not here to move your sin. The blood is here to give you the life of the Father that you live by. That's why Jesus said, I come that you may have it. And may have it what? See, in the blood, you can't measure the life of God. And the more you apply it to you, the more that life now begins to overtake Cancer can't take you out. Diabetes can't take you out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You, you see what I'm saying? Suicide can't take you out. You see what I'm saying? Now, you're looking at somebody who's about to commit what? Spiritual suicide. Where am I now? Talking to you in Tennessee. Why? Because the life in the blood is stronger than suicide. Are you with me? Okay. So, I want to take you through this fellowship. Amen in Jesus' name. Is that all right? Okay, so if you would, just come to the altar. Those that feel connected, I'm just going to take you through a prayer, and I'm going to fellowship with the blood, and I'm going to pronounce those over you in Jesus' name. Is that all right? Now, those of you that have any kind of sickness and disease in Jesus' mighty name, the blood is going to remove it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Oh, I sense the presence of the blood. My God, I sense the presence of the blood. Now, those of you that have businesses, business owners, I want you to lift your business up, okay? Now, because your business is not going to experience drought. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, I don't have time to go into it, but in the blood is the wealth of God. Because the, the blood is a kingdom currency. Uh, you have to see it. The blood is a what? kingdom currency okay so therefore and I can show you in scripture that the blood canceled debt the blood did what cancel debt so if it canceled the debt in my life it would cancel the debt on your business are you see what I'm saying and, and get greedy like me so my kids uh, they not going in debt are you hear what I'm saying and in fact, my, my natural lineage and my spiritual lineage will not experience debt in the name of Jesus Christ by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah! Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. Are, 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 you see what I'm saying? Okay. So, where's Deacon Wallace? Okay. So, just lift your hands. Yes, uh, 
Yes, yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Say this with me. Righteous judge. Thank you for the courts. I ask now that the courts be seated. At this moment, I give myself to Jesus Christ, his dimension, which is grace and truth. Now, I repent for all iniquity that is outdated in my natural lineage and in my spiritual lineage. I decree and declare in Jesus' name as I repent, 1 John 1 and 7 gives me legal right to unlock the cleansing in the blood of Christ. Blood of Christ, thank you for being my voice in the courts of heaven and my witness in the courts of heaven. I now give you authority to redeem, reconcile, bring closure and the end of a thing that's been stealing, robbing for my legacy, my destiny, my ministry, my finances, and my authority. Blood of Christ, wash me, make me white as snow, according to Isaiah 1 and 18, I receive your washing, therefore, I now give you authority to speak for me in the earth realm, blood of Christ, guide me with your voice to the hidden treasures that is in the earth realm. Holy Spirit, I partner with your voice according to John 16 and 13. Now speak to me according to the conversation that is targeting me, my life, my lineage, my business, my authority, and my ministry. Now show me things to come. Blood of Christ, I apply you to my hands, my conscience, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, and my feet. Now blood of Christ, according to Leviticus 17 and 11, you said, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And you have given it to me upon the altar to make an atonement for my soul. It is the blood that makes an atonement for my soul. I thrust my soul on the altar. Now wash, cleanse my soul from every spot and blemish that I may now possess the fullness of your inheritance in Jesus name amen amen and amen come on and shout to Jesus Now, I'm, I'm praying a special prayer for all business owners. I want you to lift your hands if you own a business. Blood of Christ, I thank you right now for every home, every hand that is lifted now. In this dispensation, you said that this is the age of the blood and the Holy Spirit. I say that no business in this place or watching me live will suffer drought. Oh, I feel the presence of the blood of Christ coming. I command when the church exited following Moses, 
the church left with over a hundred million dollars blood of Christ I say that they will not only receive that inheritance but greater I decree that I'm seeing spirit of multiplication multiplication is coming down right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I decree your business shall multiply your business will expand I say it will be it will expand in different cities different states there will be a holy gossip about your name about your business Google will be going crazy looking seeking for you in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus I seal this now wealth from the blood of Christ in Jesus name Amen <laughs>